everybody. Welcome to Bitch Sesh. It's your host, Danielle Schneider. Sadly, Casey Wilson cannot be here tonight. She has fallen very ill. I know there was reports of her death last week, and <laughs> those were not true, um, thank God. But I don't know. She's fallen ill, and she, she wanted me to deliver this message. She said... I'm too sick to be here, but maybe that is just punishment for daring to mistake Max for Ariana's brother. Yes, we got a lot of tweets and direct messages telling us how wrong we were that um, that that wasn't Max on the couch in the back of the party in Vanderpump Rules. And to that, I say I still think it was. I don't. I just. I don't care what we have. What we state on this podcast is truth, and I don't care if it's not literal truth, but it is my truth. So, for anyone that wants to correct me again and tell me that it is not Max on the couch, that it is Ariana's brother, I say, fuck off. (laughs) So. There you go. A little bit of business, Um, guys. We have a awesome live show coming up um, at. Largo in Los Angeles on February 22nd, and we're going to have funny videos and lots of stuff and our awesome guest, Jerry O'Connell, which I'm very excited about. People have been demanding he return to the show, and he always gives quite a show. So I am nervous. (laughs) He is a very strong, possessive, sort of like intense guy. He's, he's a lot and we love him. So I'm, I'm nervous and excited and all those things. Now guys, we also have a special guest tonight. He's terrible at fantasy football. I'll tell you that <laughs> okay. much. He's well, last I'll in my intru- league. I'll introduce you in a second. You okay. just hold tight. <laughs> hold tight. Now guys, a few weeks ago on the podcast, Casey and I spoke of my birthday and a gift that I had received from my husband, Matt Besser. <laughs> See, this is already in. No! I, <laughs> we spoke of a gift that I'd received on my birthday from my husband, a, uh, some lingerie from Amazon.com. <laughs> and my husband heard that part of the podcast. <laughs> and so he just... Before we bring out our, our our guest for the week, I just he wanted to make a statement. I want to know regards. why your guest for the week just laughed at that. Just <laughs> I don't when know. you said Amazon.com. She knows you and she knows that most laundry doesn't come from Amazon.com. <laughs> what does that mean? That's my problem. <laughs> it's a gamble buying any type of apparel on mm-hmm. Amazon.com. Because you don't know how it's gonna fit. Yeah, and it's all coming from China. Mm-hmm. And you, but beyond fit, what what should scare me about it coming from China? Beyond fit, I mean, I feel like, and uh, no disrespect to the country of yeah. China, of but I've noticed that products that I buy from China, yeah. they come with like a certain kind of like uh, Gross from feel. formaldehyde <laughs> smell to it. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so <laughs> even though I have bought myself like underwear and bras from yeah. Amazon, mm-hmm. not sure if they came. I think they, but I don't know if I would get like lingerie. So. Please. Okay, so so does it go, <laughs> does that smell go away when you wash it, or you think it's just yeah, part yeah. of the material? Oh, you just need to air it out for like a day, and you're fine. But like like our crib for our child <laughs> came from China, and it reeked for a long time. Like we're poisoning our children. Guys, this is our guest for the week. I'll just figure out. No, no, no. I'm happy to. This is Deanna Russo, who I'm very Hi. excited. <laughs> She's a hilarious actress and uh, an amazing person. I'm very excited to have her on the podcast, but. But I, Let me just say, I, like, half the stuff statement. in our house comes from Amazon, but it's not made by Amazon. It's not. I just felt like my character was assassinated. <laughs> I was trying to do something, and, and I freely admitted to you when I gave it to you that it was really a gift for me. Uh, yeah, I but said I spoke that. of that. I said that on the podcast. And and then and you you neglected to say I also got another gift for you, which was. The silk uh, Punisher underwear from Kmart that I got myself. (laughs) My husband also. So so me with underwear on is a treat for you, like you with underwear on is a treat for me. It's not the same thing, especially like I'm not a fan of the Punisher. I honestly don't know what the Punisher is. So when you present it. It's your nickname for my penis. (laughs) You guys have to understand that Matt presented himself to me in this in this pair of underwear with a, it looked to be a skull and crossbones. 
No crossbones. It was, like, it was, it was skull. a skull. So it was like silky. Over where my penis would be, yeah. <laughs> silky underwear with a skulls all over it. Like multiple and sort black, of. Like and black. Like sexy black. Yeah. Sexy and I. Pirate. And he. Pre- That's why I chose it. Of the, he, of the superhero <laughs> underwear at Kmart, it was the only black he choice. He presented himself in this underwear. He presented this underwear as if that was also a gift to me, <laughs> to which I had to explain to him, like. A man in underwear isn't necessarily a gift to women. (laughs) And as much as I love you and love your body, like... Why aren't you looking at me when you say this? (laughs) I'm looking at (laughs) you. It's a safe space. Because I have to look away. Because I can't look at you directly in the eyes and say these things that are tough that I don't know that I'd even say in therapy. It's very hard for... I think I speak for a lot of men, maybe women out there too. I don't know. But it's hard to go to the lingerie store. When you walk into the lingerie store, if you hang out there as a solo man for more than four minutes, you look like a creep. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to know what you're getting there. And I dart in there. The (laughs) few times I've been there, I dart in there and I pretend like I know what I'm looking for. And I go to a, but as soon as I've looked at three pair of whatever and I'm not happy, I got to get out of there. I don't want to be that guy. Because all women are looking at me like, what's that guy looking for? No, they're I don't like, be that, that guy. guy is buying something for his wife or girlfriend. No, but it's too much because then you hold it up and people are like, looking at me like, why are you holding it up? What are you looking for in this? No one is looking at you in that store. Oh, yeah, without question they are. And, uh, <laughs> And then on Amazon, it's just anonymous. I can go through a hundred choices and not look like an idiot. And this is no. There was some lingerie on Amazon.com for like eight dollars. This was way up into it the was, teens. <laughs> I looked it up. It was like fourteen dollars. <laughs> oh, it was high teens. It was like sixteen dollars. <laughs> I know, and you spare no expense, and I, I, I bet you didn't spend as much on your Punisher underwear. <laughs> I don't know what country the punch your underwear is from, but <laughs> I think uh, it, it was black underwear that complimented your black lingerie. Yeah, it was. They were both. Well, it was, you know. Well, I bought both of them, so at least one of them has to be a gift to you. I don't agree with that statement. They're both gifts to me? I think they were both gifts for you. And I appreciated them. And I'm so glad that your birthday present for next year is taken care of by you. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, again, happy to have it and participate in the activities that we use them for. <laughs> but it wasn't necessarily the gift that I expected. That's okay, personal all. question. Uh-huh. Once you... Um, uh, what's it? Ba- ba- not baptize. Once you christen, once you christen yeah, uh, sure, a sure, new sure. piece of lingerie, mm-hmm. not underwear, lingerie. Yeah, lingerie. Do you ever go back and wear it again? Yeah, because I well, find I've that tried like never. every three days since the first day. <laughs> I'm like, and I think even it like fell apart into <laughs> dust in the wash. <laughs> and uh, uh, we wrapped a dead frog in it, and it kept it alive. <laughs> um. It, I've tried every night. It has been a little bit cold for LA, but then the last two nights, last night I said it's very warm tonight. And <laughs> you it did, was. And, and even tonight, you know what? It's warmer. <laughs> you know Isn't what? Isn't it? Isn't it warmer it's tonight? Sure is, I'm sure. It's, it's the is. warmest. I, it's not. I get real cold. <laughs> I get really cold. It's this easily. is the warmest it's going to be in this winter. Yeah, I just want you to think know, about that. The temperature that. drops at night. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you for coming on, saying your piece. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, I wish I could make myself sexy to you. Oh, oh. come on. No, you can't walk no, away on that. No, see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to wear that fucking thing tonight. <laughs> Danielle. God damn it. God damn it. <sighs> Maybe we should reschedule. <sighs> Maybe. Just dark. Maybe. Oh, God. Okay, guys. Officially, this is Deanna Russo. I first came to appreciate your work on Burning Love. You were hilarious. You were the woman with the monkey monkey heart. heart, (laughs) And I'm sure you get recognized for that all the time. It is the most prideful recognition that I've ever received. Um, I became a fan of yours and then a friend of yours since then. But that was when I first got to know you and I was like, this woman is hilarious. (laughs) And also why I can appreciate you and why Casey and I appreciate you is because you are a huge fan of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Oh my God, since you guys started your podcast, podcast I was like you need you need a New Jersey ambassador you do because we 
I used to understand New Jersey. Like it used to be one of my favorites, but it right. has since fallen out of favor. But yeah. you, are, you are from New Jersey. So here, okay. So I'm born and raised New Jersey. I haven't lived there since I was 18 years old, which is almost. Mm-hmm. I know 20, 20 years it's ago rough. I know Jesus Christ I'm helping plan my 20th reunion and it's it's great guys it's great so what I'm getting at is um after I graduated high school my parents moved away like my dad's in Florida my, mom, my mom's in Pennsylvania but mm-hmm. even before that my mom moved like an hour away and an hour away in New Jersey is like living in another state because yeah. it's so densely populated that if you're more than 20 minutes like, like a, anything more than a 20 minute drive in New Jersey is a fucking trek yeah. right yeah. So uh, I think so. I've only taken a train there. So. <laughs> um, that's great. Support public transportation. Yeah, that's no, wonderful. Sure, sure. I, I just get in and out. Let's get in and <laughs> out. Get in and out. Uh, so the thing about, so I grew up in Morris County and then Somerset County, which is all like Morris County is a lot where Franklin Lakes, all that, all that stuff is. Okay. okay. So North, the, the, the center part of the Northern part of the of, of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And so I have this wonderful, like, it's like taking a bath of nostalgia every time I watch it because it's like, oh, these are my family members and each character that they, or each real person that is on the show, I, I know. just treat them all as characters. Well, they dread, they have so much stage makeup and costume on that costume. it's hard to believe that they're not like <laughs> in some drag show somewhere. I really do feel like, yeah, that's, yes. Uh, I feel that way about Vanderpump in a way specifically Lala, but it's cool. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll get there. I was going to say, I love you, Lala. Let's move back to Jersey. <laughs> so, uh, I just feel, I just feel like every part of New Jersey, like every character of New Jersey is a part of me. Like I, I, I identify with each person, even Danielle, I identify everybody in a way that feels like, Oh, I get them. Um, and they all have, as you were saying, a very unique look, mm-hmm. but I think, I think here's, here's where it gets appreciative for anybody is that, Jersey, Jersey is like the little sister of New York. So when you mm-hmm. think of what like, like the slutty, yeah. tawdry, yeah. <laughs> ill-dressed, kind of not as, um, yeah, not something as to prove, dimmer, dimmer. something to prove. Yes. Angrier. That's the whole thing. Angry. Yes. Oh, Danielle, you fucking get it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. So, if, so, and they take themselves so seriously. And so for like Melissa Gorga, who I respect and adore for her to be like putting all her energy into the store. It's in fucking Montclair, New Jersey. I know who's going exactly, to Exactly. Who's going Montclair. You're a beautiful town. By the way, the best kept secret of New Jersey is that it's actually fucking gorgeous, but like it Come is. again. Once you get, <laughs> Once you get outside of Newark, it is a really beautiful state. Okay. But it's it's got a rich history of some like uh, really seedy mob <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, exactly. People uh populating it. So so it's just so I get a big kick out of how much they take themselves seriously and how fancy they are. Cause like one year their big their big season trip was to Vermont. Meanwhile, Beverly Hills is going to Dubai and Hong Kong. Like, I get it. I get That's it. That's my problem with New Jersey. They're not giving I mean, yes, they went to Italy this year, but we've been there before yeah. and they seem to be going on some sort of weird shoe buying trip. Like same yeah. with OC. I'm just like Again, they went to Iceland this year, but like Beverly Hills and Atlanta, like give me yes, stuff with their yes. vacations. I, of course, San Francisco with Atlanta was a real bummer, but like, but yeah, when you're going to Dubai and you're going to like the New York ladies go to like Marrakesh, like yeah. these are trips, you know, like, um, or even like uh, when, when the Atlanta ladies went to Jamaica, like this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, because so, the housewives represent to us American royalty. Oh, right. So we want them to be elevated in a way that inspire us and Mm -hmm. give us something that like, you know, gets us to forget about our shitty lives. And New Jersey's just a little bit too close to our shitty lives. Like if I lived in New Jersey, I could get to Vermont. Like again, exactly. by Amtrak. If you can you get can, there yes. by Amtrak, then that is not a destination for so us. So I understand. So for that reason, I understand why uh, you would not enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think that's why I joined. Because it, it's like, it's kind of like camp. It's yeah. just like, it's it's really campy to me. But Oh, for sure. Let yeah. me ask you this. Because you look so beautiful and normal. <laughs> that, <laughs> that no, truly, if you guys could see this woman, yeah. you Google her, you'll see she's stunning or any of you who have seen her and her various acting jobs, you know, and you're also very normal looking like not like a stitch of makeup, not a false eyelash, <laughs> not like a bedazzled half cropped sweater with like a weird baseball hat, you know, turned to the side. Like your fashion is very <laughs> understated that to know, like, yeah. how did you 
drop all of that to to find Dude. yourself. We can thank my older brothers for uh, keeping it real, as they say. That's so dumb. But no, like I, I grew up in the grunge era wearing my older brother's clothing, like hand me downs. So, so that's grunge not... did hit New Jersey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Didn't think like in my mind, New Jersey kind of like skipped over like Nirvana and Smashing oh, no. Pumpkins. And they were just like had like Frank Sinatra playing on a loop. I, like, like that's what I pictured New Jersey to be I like. was like a big I was like a fish head like I I wouldn't go on, I wouldn't I wouldn't like go on tour with fish but like I I was like an Almond Brothers like concert goer rusted root you know come on shocking 90s jam bands that's where that's where I'm at like you got it just has like volare <laughs> like just playing in New Jersey like when you get on the turnpike like that's just like <laughs> constantly playing so interesting to understand I mean I guess Springsteen's from Jersey right yeah yeah okay so I mean, there you go now let's talk I know last week we didn't have an episode so I just want to just touch on the Jersey yes, reunion. Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. Um, then we'll we'll touch on everything else. But the Jersey reunion. I mean, again, I didn't feel like there was much going on this season. So the reunion, yeah. I mean, it was a breath of fresh to have Kim D there. Like she always gives us just, and not even fresh, just a breath of fresh garbage to yeah. have Kim D there. She is... Um, like the the love child of Cruella Deville and Donald Trump. Yes, she is completely. <laughs> she's a garbage monster. It's like true. not even a garbage person, but a garbage monster. monster. She yeah, just yeah, like yeah. sits in the garbage all day and just going like you're a whore. Like it's you know a- what I mean? Like she <laughs> just like just a cigarette in the hand. Like and we opens- love her for it. Oh, like, we just I'm want more, obsessed. more, more Kim D. And and even when Teresa like in this in the last reunion is like you're a you, what did she call her? <laughs> like she couldn't even. You're a mad man. Like it's yeah, a yeah, mad, yeah. madam. She was like, you're a mad dam. Your like, prostitution uh, company. Like yeah, she couldn't even. Prostitution company. Yeah. Teresa's the dumbest. She's, She's like, so dumb. <laughs> your LLC for yeah, whoring. Yeah. Uh, everyone's got to <laughs> got to like fill out papers. Yeah. You take taxes out. <laughs> They're going public. Like, it's, it's real big. It's real a big. Huge prostitution company. Um. We got to talk about, I mean, Teresa's horniness is just a little bit, yeah. it's just, guys. She's not going to last. She's not, Like, no. Joe's not. I, I just don't think she's long for Joe. That is my personal opinion. I mean, I think she will hold out because um, I don't, I, I love you, Teresa. You're not the smart, you're not the brightest crayon in, in the box, no. but uh, but I do believe she's loyal. So I think sure. she's not one, especially with the kids. I mean, yeah. imagine like, like, she's got four daughters. I like, know. how hard is that to like, Get out, and I'm just saying. All right, so I think she'll be loyal. I think she'll be loyal. Now, here was something shocking. This was the most shocking thing that was revealed during the reunion part two, which was that at the end of Kim D's charity event, the people that got the money for the charity received... $1,000? $1,000. $1,000? $1,000. Like that's a money, a la- money laundering one dollars Like Dolores and Siggy could have just pulled, t- just written a check for 500 each and not walked in the show. And still like it would have been fine. Like after all of that, that charity, again, not that $1,000 yeah. isn't a lot of Kim money. D, come on, get food donated. This is going to be on television. Like you can, you can promote people's shit. I was like, a thousand dollars like all the people in the room yeah. could have just written a check and yeah. it would have added up to more than that it's like if simple. everyone in that room gave ten dollars it would have yeah. been and Kim D's response that. is like what it's money it's she's like, like okay you're right but she's but. like I gotta pay for the food <laughs> it was like then maybe don't have that food or get it donated like this is for charity yeah anyway that to me was like what <sighs> um, I was gonna say my uh, a highlight for me in this in part two was cock a roach Cockroach. Yeah, it was three that? syllables. I think it was Melissa Cockroach. I I All just love how them. they bring that back. Um, and I wanted to talk about. Well, I mean, they spent the most amount of minutes on Siggy and the uh, and Israeli Semitic, connection, yes. the anti-Semitic thing, which is like it's like Siggy. Here's the thing about Sig. I identify with her because I feel like anybody that comes in with really good intentions get so psychologically damaged, right? Because yeah. it started with like Caroline and Dina. Like I feel like they came in with good intentions and they like it, got, it fucked them up. Then Jacqueline like had good intentions. She got so fucking crazy. Yeah, Jacqueline now it's is. yeah. And then Siggy is like she came in last season being like, hey, I'm gonna be the peacemaker. I'm the relationship expert. And it drove her fucking nuts. And the whole thing with her and Margaret is like, you know, we all have those women in our lives that like just their presence in a room. Like you walk into a party and you see that they're there too and you're like your face gets hot and you're like, I don't no, it's like you can't, like I don't okay maybe I'm being like no, talking no, too no, much no, about no, me no, no, no. but like I feel like we all have that one woman or two something in our lives that just really triggers it and I feel like what if Margaret, I am that person for a lot of I, people 
I guarantee that you are. Like we all, we 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 gotta embrace that. That's and, and, upsetting. And if we are that, we have to give them space. Don't 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 attack them or corner them, which is what Margaret's kind of doing. So like Margaret is that for Siggy. However, Siggy, if you're listening, you're like that vegan friend that won't shut up about being fucking vegan. It's like we get it. You're Jewish. We get it that your 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 parents suffered. Okay, mm-hmm. but like fucking calm the hell down. <laughs> She's and I think beyond the the Holocaust forget it was everything she treated that Holocaust thing the same as she treated the cake it's <laughs> all she, you're right like, you're right everything had the exact same amount of intensity that if it was like this was uh, the only thing that she kind of like just was like this about then you're like okay well this is her hot button like this is the thing but for her it was like pick a topic <laughs> She's just, she's so unwell. And the fact that she is going to descend upon Boca, like I fear. (laughs) And again, there are a lot of monsters in Boca, but like she will be queen of them because that place, like, and and she also talks of Boca as if it is the promised land. She's like, I'm going to be in Boca. And she's like, I'm going to have no problems. Yeah. And she'll be like, she said like, oh, you know, if it doesn't work out with uh, Dolores and her new boyfriend. I got a lot of men in Boca. Yes. It's like, you know, when there they take no t- cats in America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love an American tale reference. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so she treats Boca. And again, as someone who lived there, just know it's not great. Um, um, Danielle Stout. I can't Danielle say her last Stout. name. Stout. Uh, her eyebrows went up. They Every, didn't go down. Her whole body is, she has been dipped in formaldehyde. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. there is not a part of her that felt not of rubber. Okay, so here's my analysis of Danielle. I feel like she faced a lot of adversity growing oh, sure up. Did. And she's just operating from this injured place all the time. Like she is just she's the most broken housewife survival I've ever mode yes. all the time and i feel like for like nobody knows how to handle her and it's very it's um it's very wiry right like there's something not trustworthy but i think she means well but like people don't know how to receive her and be like oh, okay you're just you're just a little bit scarred like it, i don't know so no, she's damaged and even beyond shannon like shannon to me from oc is one of the most damaged human beings I've ever come across in my life, but I still have faith that she will rise from the ashes. Mm-hmm. I still have faith that there is like family and you friends beautiful. and like people who love her and support her and, and, and a community around her. I believe Danielle is a lone wolf and she <laughs> is wandering the forest hungry and thin with ribs sticking out and just like perched, yeah. ready to go. And, I and f- whatever she's doing is working for her daughter. Cause like her daughter, I feel like is coming out. Yes. Norm daughters, oh, right. Yeah. Two daughters, like they're she, coming out normal. But so she, good job, Danielle. But she is a hungry but, coyote. Yeah. <laughs> like she's yeah. pacing. And oh, I good. thought the, the most amazing moment was like people were going in on her on the reunion just yes. like Dolores was like you're a monster you're garbage you're a whore you're trash you're crazy you're on drugs and she is taking it and taking it and like she's fighting back but she's still taking it taking it and at the end Andy is like so Danielle one thing are you glad you came back after everything is and she's like yeah sure yeah. am like <laughs> no hesitation smile on her face no hesitation she's like yeah it's a real fun ride like I was because you know what that's shocked. nothing it's nothing compared to what she's dealt with in her life know, her she's life like this is just oh, god bless you a Daniel. dark 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 just the wilderness <laughs> guys we're gonna take a slight break and then we're gonna come back with another special guest this episode is chock full Guys, we're back. And as I promised, we have a very special guest just to talk Beverly Hills with us because this next guest who's been on the podcast before, you guys love her, you know her, and she happened to be at PK's 50th birthday yacht party. That's right. She was there, guys. The episode that we witnessed this week, this person was on boots on the motherfucking boat. Okay? Okay. Boot, bees on the bee, okay? Please welcome one of our favorite guests ever, Nicole Shabtai. Thank you. Who is also, five weeks ago, had a fucking baby. Yeah. And you're here because you said this is got to be told. This is the first time I've left the house, and um, it's incredibly important. And thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. No, um, this, these are, this needs... This needs to be told. No, I mean, it's like a reporter in the war zones. You hear Thank about you. these things all the time. Yes. It's like, you don't have a choice in this moment. I didn't have a choice. Um, I found out about this party, a um, uh, party uh, which I was certainly not invited to. <laughs> you were not. Uh, I was certainly not. How does and- one who's not invited <laughs> end up at like a 50th of mm. supposedly 
one's nearest and dearest. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, I overheard um, my uh, stepmom, who, uh, long story short, is uh, acquaintances with Dorit. Um, and oh. my father, I know, I that's like a whole other story. God, and we can get into it a different time, I think. Um, so basically, uh, I heard that uh, there was this party and my stepmom was uh, going back to Miami where they live. And, um, and I was like, well, I'll go. Uh, and my dad was like, I don't want to go to this. And I was like, no, you have to please. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they told me that it was black tie. Again, I was five months pregnant at the time. Could not fit into any of my clothes. Mm -hmm. Um, but guys, when you get an opportunity, when you're called upon, when you, you answer, you answer the call, just like, you know, like, Mary, I assume, answered the call to have Jesus. <laughs> the of course. Fact that, like, of course. Like, your body is doing this. Yeah, and you, the, your body is doing this. And yes. I think it's a comparable thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, okay. So, so, and how does he say, how does your father <laughs> say, is this invitation transferable <laughs> to my daughter? I think maybe he doesn't say and he okay. just RSVPs. Okay, for two. For two. Um, guys, the invitation um, is such that it's, you know, PK's face on like looking course, very gorgeous, James, gorgeous James Bondish. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a surprise 007 Ugh. boat party. I just like didn't think about it in terms of like it's a, like a, on a boat. Like it just it didn't cross my mind um, in the days leading up to this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, also because I think that uh, the location was not disclosed. Oh, okay. Huh? The location. It to RSVP and it said to RSVP to the to a party, but the location was not disclosed. In LA, come on, it's that's like everything. So, I won't go to so a party did, west of the four hundred five. Yeah. When did you find two out? Days two before. days before. Two said. days. They give you two days. So I guess if you want to cancel at the last minute, you hear it's on a boat. Smart people yeah. say <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, do you but, have an aversion to boats? Um, I don't think I have an aversion to boats. I do have an aversion to being uh, stuck at sea. Yeah, trapped. Like, um, that's yeah. my aversion to boats. It's like, yeah. I'm a person that wants to like wander in a party and then maybe leave, leave. when I feel Absolutely. the need. Yes. Absolutely. When you're on a boat, they're like, you ain't fucking going anywhere. Because I feel like Ed, Dorit was smart. She knew like people want to get the fuck out of this party. Yeah. And she's like, no, you will stay. Right. So give me the deets. Give us... This First of all, did you have to sign a disclaimer? Like, hey, I'm, I agree to be filmed. Okay, so here's what I did. Um, a person who begged to go to this party and then refused to appear on camera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I um, uh, would not sign a waiver uh, to appear. I wanted my face blurred. Ah, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go and I love it. watch it. Yes. I'm going to watch for all those blurred folks and see you in the That's sea Nicole. of blurs. You guys. I did happen to see my face. They did not blur it. <gasps> Bastards. It's very, uh, while Dorit is singing, it's very much in the background, all the way in the back. And you Screaming can see my face sings. just being like, <gasps> no. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so, yes, uh, I, I squeezed myself into a uh, black tie dress of mm -hmm. sorts. And... Um, you have to be in Marina Del Rey at 6 p.m., which... Oof. That's rush hour. It's Jesus rush hour. Christ. No, this is... I, I've already, I'm doing a lot of work you are. for this you, party. Again, you knew where you needed to be, <laughs> and you correct. knew, you know, well, like, when Christina Mana... It was a Wednesday. When Christina Mana... Sure, right? That's her name? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. Reporter, you know, battle... Goes into battle. Like, she doesn't ask how much traffic. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, she, yeah. You just go. She goes, and exactly. she just deals with whatever she has to deal with to make it happen. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So thank you for your service. Oh, you're yes. so welcome. You're so important. welcome. Okay, so I get there, refuse to appear on camera, get on the boat. All smart. Thank you. Um, and uh, guys, as you know, Dorit and PK are not on the boat. If you've no, seen the episode. Right. Arrived yeah. via helicopter, via yeah. boat. Yacht, via, via then speedboat. Speedboat. <laughs> exactly. It was three different huge expensive things to go what seemed to be uh, less than a mile. Seems redu yeah. redundant, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I get on the boat and the first person I see is Erica Jane <gasps> in oh, her white yeah. pantsuit. Gorgeous pantsuit. Gorgeous. Absolutely pantsuit. gorgeous. And you guys, 
She looks very sad. What? No. She's got yes. a whole, like, what's her name? Um, Gwen Stefani thing happening. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, is this what I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, what could she be so sad about? Mr. Girardi's hurt foot? Exactly. Now that we know. <laughs> <laughs> now that we know her husband was in an accident. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, because I thought, ooh, maybe something is yeah. going to mm-hmm. go down, but. No. no, just you know, she was just upset about his foot. I guess, <laughs> uh, um, understandably. Sure, he's an eighty-five-year-old man <laughs> who he knows has, how much time they I have. I know his bones are brittle. <laughs> I'm surprised he can stand up. <laughs> um, and uh, and then you know you've got your Lisa Rinna. You've got everyone mm-hmm. is kind of like trickling on the boat, and mm-hmm. uh, the energy is tough. Is it? It is very tough. How, how mean? so? Yeah. It is like. Um, Everyone is the insecurity. Oh, so is, everybody's like looking over your head to see who else like is coming in. The air on the boat is thick mm-hmm. with desperation. paranoia, desperation, mm-hmm. and insecurity. Wow. And those I, are my three favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately regret coming. Oh wow. And yeah. it feels like scary. It Ooh. feels scary. And you exposed your baby to this. And you I know. <laughs> How I was, is she? Is she okay? <laughs> so, so far, so good. Okay, but we, okay. we don't know It'll yet. It'll come out the, later. The effects you know, of Again, this. we find out later. Exactly. We, um, again, what well, we found out with smoking earlier. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. Did we couldn't have known. Okay. So um, all of the women, it seems like, I don't know if you guys have ever... Uh, been a, it seemed it it was like they all were posing in a way that it was like this is B roll this is B roll we're we are B roll we are and doing B-roll is like B-roll. what we yeah. see at parties and stuff when they're not necessarily talking but their camera is just like swishing around right. and seeing things on the party something to right. cut to maybe without audio yeah. exactly like mm-hmm. like I, I noticed Camille kind of like oh, Camille is shimmying to the no queen music. of B roll. <laughs> 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 She's always dancing to a to an '80s song in her own mind from her yes. glory days on Club MTV. Like that song is playing on a loop in That's Camille's right. head. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, and and Lisa doesn't see. It doesn't seem like Lisa Rinna is um, wanting to talk to people or be around them. It's like on the show or on, just in general. In general, uh-huh. I was. I got the air that it was like, like she needed to be brought over when maybe a camera was rolling. She needed to be called like, to set, there, invited guys, to set. Can I tell you something? There are setups. <gasps> I'm it, it, like <laughs> no. it's no. I know it's, so but upset. it's not like. Like, it's not as fake as, like, a setup on a real TV show, but it, there are setups. It feels... and oh, then yeah. Like, it, Teddy talking to Doreen at the end? Yeah. That was clearly staged. Really? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so gullible. Guys, yeah. Like, what, here's the thing. Because, like, Doreen's hosting this party. At what moment, with all the people that she needs to see and deal with and fires to put out, what time would she ever give to someone who she clearly disagrees about with a, with etiquette? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I why think, would she take time think, unless the show set it up? But I also think Dorit is the kind of person who would do that oh. because I think that she lives in a TV show inside her mind. Ow. Okay, you know, this. like I think she's like she's not a real human woman. <laughs> okay. Oh, speaking. Uh, well, let me yeah. ask you a question. Yes. Did you see any any of the setups that we saw? Like the yes. different, like yes, kind yes, of like yes, these yes. two people talking. These. Two, yes. Did you see any of them happen? Like, were yes. you there on the side? I was. I was there on the side when they were talking about, um, uh, like where PK and Dorit. Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. like like before they started, and it's like oh they're and now oh they're coming in on the boat. And then when they came in, Uh that I have to say was a very touching moment. I cry. (laughs) I will say this. And I am made of stone, especially when it comes to (laughs) PK. Like I have deemed him a pig person and I, you know, you don't cry when a pig is upset, but (laughs) I, he's a pig person. But when he started hysterically crying that about his real. parents I shed so many tears that was real and all of his friends his friends really were there and he well, was really he really was surprised I know it made me soften because it was funny because Casey had texted me and said like ah uh, 
I cried about PK in this episode and I hadn't watched it yet. And I was like, well, Casey, you disappoint me. Right. <laughs> I said, I don't know you anymore. <laughs> and then I was bawling. And that's why she's not here today. <laughs> that's why she's not here. Um, so you got to see that. Did you cry when it actually it, happened? I was, I was deeply moved. Deeply I was deeply touched. Here. And then I was like, but it's PK. What am I, what am I doing? And then I, and then I was like, wow, I'm, I'm a piece of shit is what it felt like. You know what <laughs> no. I mean? Maybe he, I'm like, he's the piece of shit in that, but I'm the piece of shit. He's a nice man who has a family and friends who is so happy to see. But then, oh, <laughs> guys, there was later on in the night, a, what I, a 15 minute video no. montage message no. from all of his friends and each one of them <sighs> tight five guys Fifth tight too long five yeah and tight. by five we mean seconds <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> it was like no one edited this thing Oof. and it was like pk you're a criminal you know what i mean like it was like all and of they his were friends like, seriously all of his friends right. were like he's stolen from me ha 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 oh. like it was like a lot of like you know that kind of stuff but, you know. Can we talk about the Zooby Zooby Zoom moment? <laughs> yes, let's. <laughs> it was so... Mrs. Draper dances It was so for, embarrassing. Yeah. It was so embarrassing. No, really? It was. For it, everyone. My, for everyone involved. My dad, my poor dad, who I dragged on this boat for six fucking hours. Oh, that's so six long. hours I was on this boat. And I'm pregnant and I'm starving. And you know what? Uh, was there nothing to eat? Oh, there was. Except the woman next to me, sitting next to me at, at dinner, found a latex glove in her salad. What? <laughs> No. I have a photo. I yeah, have a can photo. I see this photo? This needs to go up. This needs to go up. Oh, um, Nicole. Can I post this picture please. tomorrow? We should blur their faces. Oh, yes. of course. I don't know how to do that. April, can you do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> April, can you do technology for me, please? <laughs> I know. <laughs> April, can you punch keys in a keyboard for me? <laughs> Wait, can I ask you something? And, and this I really want to know. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh my God, you guys! <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I will post this picture. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> So clearly they use gloves to handle the produce, right. but Did then Okay, I will post this picture tomorrow. This is insane, guys. Yeah. Okay, well. So after so they found the latex glove, I was like, well, I, I'd rather not You're like, I'm with partake. Child. I'm with child. Why? I don't know what, you know. What, what else? Could, what else? I did have a little bit of caviar and then found out you shouldn't have caviar when you're pregnant. And then I was like, I've Oops. been on this boat for five hours and then I had a drink. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Of Atta course. Girl. And you know what? Your unborn child thanked you for that. Yeah. I needed to relax. I'm I had just, a yeah. glass of wine. Wine is better than cortisol. Here is my question. Yes. And this I really pondered as I was watching the episode mm -hmm. because boy George mm -hmm. was there mm -hmm. and he yes. was singing. Yes. And I was like, do they own boy George? <laughs> yeah, what was that? <laughs> like, they have to bring, he has to sing for them all the time. I feel like there is some sort of um, indentured servitude mm -hmm. going or on in that house. Well, April wants to know who is Boy George because oh, she was born April ten years ago. Boy George. I mean, he wrote. He wrote not what which which musical did he Car wrote? Uh, uh, it was called Taboo. <laughs> really, <laughs> based on his life. You guys, it doesn't guys. matter. No, this does matter. I feel like Boy George doesn't need anything, but he but just I think loves he does. attention. He I worry that he does need something. He needs it. I worry that his fortune went up his nose mm -hmm. in the 80s and the 90s <sighs> and that he has nothing left. And so he works as a singing monkey for Dorit and PK. Did you see the previews for the next episode where I it was like, so. where he was like, um, PK was telling Dory, um, you know that it, you did a great job, but you know that Boy George only loves yes. to sing with people that Ooh. can't sing. It's like, why would that you? Was rough. That was rough. Any other moments that stuck out to you? Any sort of fights or? Well, um, this is important just personally. I would love to hear it. Um, yes. I, um, I was st standing at the roulette table mm -hmm. and Lisa Rinna and um, Camille were playing roulette. And I thought to myself, I need them to bless my child. Of course you do. And then I got 
too nervous. But then I saw Erica Jane Ooh. and I was like, this opportunity I shall not miss. Yeah. And I followed her <laughs> to the bar. Of course you did. <laughs> and I cornered her and I tapped her and she looked at me like, huh? And I was like, I just want to tell you that you are a true queen. <gasps> yes. Wow. Good intro. God bless. Good job. God bless you. And, um, and in that moment she looked at me and she said, thank you. And then she walked away. No, um, but still, that but she said that's, that for that you. Yeah. a child blessing. I, I just, I, I thought that was, that was better than going up this to child, the two. I mean, this child? child? Yes. Yeah. Will grow up to be wise, <laughs> solid, important. Um, he will grow up to be a king. Or she, sorry, she will grow up to that's be a okay. queen because you because were you, anointed yeah. by another queen. Yes, that's how it works. And so your child will outgrow you and leave you mm, yes. <laughs> and go on to great, great yes. things. But oh, it will God be willing. worth it. It yes. will be worth it. Yes. I think oh it was. God. I think it really was. Wow. What else can I tell you? Um, were producers wrangling you? April wants to know. Wrangling me? No, I actually, I, well, here's what happened. I like grabbed my dad and I'm like, you're walking into the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. I was like, oh my God. Oh, what if you had ruined it? I, exactly. And so, and then the producer was like, act normal. <laughs> oh, no. I have to say, I've been told that on many a set. <laughs> I've been given that note. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right. But it felt, it felt like, sorry, it felt like um, when, when I was on the boat um, in hell because it was six hours and I was out, to, out nightmare. at sea, it was, it was truly horrible. Yeah. I feel like Latex you know gloves. what, you know, people like, like Tom Hanks in <laughs> that the terminal. Yes. <laughs> yes. But also the, the, the with the cast, with the Wilson cast away, yes. that you had a very similar experience. I think, I think so. Um, yeah, it was like 6 PM. I didn't get home until 12, 15 PM. Sorry. I have, I've, I have a small child and I haven't slept in weeks and weeks. Um, and, uh, and it was, uh, it was torturous. And I thought to myself, never, ever look under the hood of a car. Never, wow. ever mm. ask how the sausage is made. Wow. But then when I got home, I was like, wow, what a great experience. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Truly. thank you for your service. Thank you. It was, yeah. it was amazing. It really was. It was just, it was great to be that close to them. Um, but not be among them. I think this yeah. is a Pulitzer you know? worthy. I know. I mean, this is some investigative journalism. We haven't had anything like this on the show before. Well, Oof. I wanted, I wished that there was, there was more, you know, you did drama. So much. How could you have done more? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You did. I and really you're so did. much. Got blessed. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is love. the most important work that has ever happened on the show. And I'm not, I know I sound like I'm being dramatic, but I'm not. Like, I'm really understanding this right now and the magnitude like we've God. never had someone this close someone from our ranks from our yeah. side of yeah, it yeah, yeah. infiltrate in a way that was legal Le you didn't oh, say no, it was no, not no, sneaking no, no, no. It, was, yeah. it was legal mm -hmm. and it was expected and you got in and you became one of them you slid you in actually, yeah you turned down the call and you were begged Thank it's you. like um, did you ever see the movie just one of the guys <laughs> I have <laughs> <gasps> she shows her tits yes <laughs> did you show your tits is what I want to know <laughs> um, did you show anyone your tits I wish now uh, that I had because I think that would have been funny mm -hmm. they would have to have blurred my face yeah, well, maybe not just your tits <laughs> 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 All of it would have been, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nicole, it was great. this was so important. Thank you so oh, no. much Thank for you. coming. And you Thank guys, you for you having me. You should see this woman. She, again, had a baby five weeks ago. She cannot tell. looks fucking amazing. Yeah, very kind. Gorgeous. <laughs> You look well like rested. You can, you, I know like, you're not, but yeah, you're, you're like very kind, you guys. You're like focusing oh, in on us. What? I, I, I took one of your pieces of advice. <gasps> what did, what did Clay I Depot. Oh! And I you look love, amazing. I love guys. <laughs> I'll say this again. It is a lifesaver. Clay de Peau. Um, you can get it at Nordstrom or on Amazon again for lingerie. You can get <laughs> terrible lingerie formaldehyde. formaldehyde lingerie that you will never wear again or that I'm going to be forced to wear this evening. And 
And or you can get this clay to post. It up. makes me feel like a person. Yes, and it's expensive, but you guys, it, it is wor- it's fucking worth it. it. Spend it's your worth last it. it's dime. hundred percent. As Siggy said, no, 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 on no, the no, reunion, Margaret, you, you, have, you have a credit card. Oh, that's right. Buy it. Like it doesn't matter if you can afford it. You, everyone has a credit card. <laughs> Make yourself feel better. Margaret was like, spend your last dollar on lipstick. That was her. Okay, cool. Spend Moving your last on. dollar on clay de Poe. <laughs> yeah. Your last seventy dollars on clay de Poe. Yes, yes, very important stuff. Wow, no. thank you. No, doing thank you. Right. Oh, thank, thank you, you for your service. <laughs> thank you. We'll take a another commercial. <laughs> Guys, we're back. I'm still. Are you okay, Deanna? Like I, April. I'm like. <sighs> dying from that yeah i had to take a lap yeah that, that was, was good. intense we've never had that sort of <laughs> intense like up First close person, and personal yeah. like seeing it on tv and then someone who experienced it i'm still reeling from it and we are going to move on to to um atlanta real quick i mean vanderpump and then atlanta real quick but i will say that um one more thing about beverly hills that we missed last week was the stupid glass thing dory and her stupid fucking Oh my fucking Who God. Cares what glass Here's the is thing. In. I know, I know that it's an etiquette, but at the same time, it's also etiquette to not belabor someone else's mis- oversight or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, let it go. Alcohol tastes the same no matter what but form. To not call it out in any way. Who gives a shit? Was... To make your host feel good is probably yes. good etiquette. Thank you. Unless they're hurting you, like make your host feel good. That's great etiquette. That's just like do unto your others, you know, fucking Bible shit. Those two right? Two like, episodes worth of drama. I know I've had a lot of biblical stuff going on here. <laughs> I'm an atheist, but I don't know what's happening. Controversial. In my life. I'm an atheist, but here we go. Um, m- uh, my favorite thing from the last episode of Beverly Hills was Lisa Frenna explaining how her husband um, turned down all of these roles to stay home with the kids. And I was like, I'm going to use that from now on. People ask me, like, what are you working on? I'm like, I just turned down a series in Toronto so I could stay home with my kids. I just turned down <laughs> Big Little Lies so I could sit home. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Sure, sure, I was sure like, you I did. I am not going to do that bullshit when I can be home. He put them to bed every night. I'm like, no. I mean, sh- no. Also, the scariest thing that I've ever seen was Ken <laughs> carrying a huge heavy tea tray. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> That's right. For the I was thing. terrified for the tea. I was Oof. terrified for Ken. Like I was like, the why horses. Are you, yeah. Why everybody. is this man? Like someone take this from him. <laughs> <laughs> like he's not going to be able to do this. Oh God, bless him. So anyway, that was honestly, I was like shaking in my boots as I was watching him carrying that. Okay. On to Vanderpump. Which episode did you watch? You watch both. Yeah. Well, you start it, with? Just like the most recent one, I guess we'll start with. Cause there's just, well, it, was, it was Peter's birthday. It was, again, I fucking hate Peter and I know Ugh. he has done nothing wrong, but I, I could not his... hate Peter more because he's, he annoys me. I don't give a shit about him. I, I do, The fact that at one point we had to watch an interaction with him and Lisa, I was like, oh my God, are we wasting my time? Oh my God. For? Where she buys him a shot and then she's like, oh, have some black tea. That'll like, that'll write the ship. So God, they're all the most, they're just the most beautiful alcoholics that they found to work. It's really yeah. stunning. Even when they do the confessionals or the interviews or whatever, they all have a strate- strategically placed drink yeah to match their outfits yeah well june pointed out something once to me and i was like oh yeah that makes sense she said they're all attractive adjacent <laughs> and i was like yes you know what i mean We're yeah like, like peter's like they're attractive but then like you know looking up close you're like oh no oh, no, 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 yeah, no yeah you're yeah. just like well lit and well made up and give the illusion of attractive but you're actually all i have a theory looking. that lala and is it james the british guy yeah okay they have the same face. Do they? <laughs> There's one angle. She contours. This is the thing. Lala, you you don't need any contour. We see you without makeup. You don't need all that shit. I'm just saying, let your skin breathe. You're gorgeous, baby. Yeah. But I do. I love Lala. I'm obsessed with her. She's great. I think she's amazing. And she said, I feel like what should be our new feminist motto. She said this statement, guys. I want it on a t-shirt. And she said, I want every single pussy in the world to get along. And I was yes. like, hell yes. Give it on a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> I want every single pussy in the world to get along. And I was like, yes. Can you tell me who is, who is her, her, who is she dating? What's that? I'm not sure. You know, thing? we just kind of logged back onto Vanderpump this year. So there is some 
gaps in my knowledge. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think he is some guy who recently got divorced and he's some businessman who has a lot of money. I'm sure a listener they will don't say his name. It's really, yeah, I think if you Google her or it, you can find out the info and I, a, a listener, please, um, please if you can us. alert Deanna, yeah. um, and myself, yeah. um, we would appreciate if you can tell us again, I know I could Google this. I know I should know. I don't mm. want to hear what That's I should what know lean on you guys for. Um, but I'm leaning on you guys because you know me and technology guys, I'm not great at it. It's, it's so, here's why I love, okay. So I was new to Vanderpump. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have met Lisa. I went to Sir for dinner, uh, last year. We have to all go to the Holy Land again. Yes. The Holy Land. Again, (laughs) we went on a pilgrimage to Sir. Of course you did. And, um, it was my first friend who invited me her mom was visiting from jersey and is a they're both a huge fan of the show and um lisa walks in and like my friend who has do you know santina muha she's like yes uh-huh. she's I totally know her awesome yeah. she's got no 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 inhibition so yes. she just like she's like hey over here and she flags lisa over mm-hmm. and lisa comes over and her mom all of a sudden becomes like a statue and won't talk and lisa and santina's trying to get like a picture she's like hey i just want to let you know my mom's a huge fan and lisa <laughs> all very prim and proper looks over at her mom and looks over at us and goes she won't even look at me <laughs> <laughs> Because she was so shy well, and she was, was very confused. Her. It was very sweet. Hey, and then eventually respect. Santina's mom was like, I just want you to let you know, like, I'm a mom too. And I know how hard it is. And I just really respect what you do. It was Aww, really beautiful. That's sweet. See, it gives me new respect for Lisa. Yeah. So that was my intro to Vanderpump Rules. Of and then course. You guys, so then I watched the show. And I'm like, oh my God, you know what's so good about this and why it, I mm-hmm. think, uh, surpasses other reality shows mm-hmm. is that it's so well performed. The way these people recite back their their lines in the interviews whatever their scripted nonsense is they fucking nail it i know more than i have in many of my roles <laughs> no they're great you know i mean they're garbage and and they're great they're, they're garbage they're garbage but i appreciate this garbage yes, thank you for your work. like there was first of all Jack said the meanest thing that I've ever heard said. And I've we've heard some awful things Jack said. Sucks. But when he said about his own girlfriend, who he has cheated on and said she he never wants to marry, when he said to her mother, well, she sleeps till yes. one and eats all day. A few <laughs> times. He said it like three times in a row. I threw my phone. I was like, no, uh, how dare you? Because God, you know what? We've all been there. And that is a person who is depressed yeah. because she is with a man who does not love her and does not respect her. So of course she sleeps till one and eats the fuck all day. I would too. Mm-hmm. And how dare you call her out? You fucking bloated 50 year old alcoholic who is dating younger people. Like yeah. fuck you. Yeah, she's I was doing everything right. You're doing everything wrong. You're Jax. a monster. That's- Although according to Tal okay. Benowitz, who owns the den, uh-huh. apparently Jax is doing some really important work is he? with Reiki and Vanessa. Who's the lady. That's- is that, that what is that at? Is that at the yes. den? I've that's been the to den. that studio. I know. Was <laughs> it the Studio City or the Hollywood one? I think it was the Hollywood one. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We did like a Mother's Day thing there. Were you at the Mother's Day meditation? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With Casey? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we were there together. <laughs> Sadly, Jax was not there. Sad. Wow. Sadly. So yeah. So apparently, he's been going back and really and making some real progress. I'm proud so of that's you, Jax. we got to get Tal on the show. Is Tal or Tall? Tall. I forget. Tal. Tall. I'm not gonna okay. That. Sorry, <laughs> Casey. Know. Can we get Casey call on a friend? All right. Um, wow. Yeah. That's insane. Okay, I didn't know that. Another thing I noticed watching Vanderpump this week is that Lala's body rejects jackets. Like. <laughs> Like anytime she has like a jacket on, it's like fighting her body to like stay on. Like she's, oh, it's always like draped around like half a shoulder and like down the other arm. Like it just Beautiful. like, it can't happen. Like, I just feel like, you know what? Try a sweater, like find something yeah. different. <laughs> like again, I love I you, love, Lala. I love mm-hmm. Lala. All respect for Lala. You don't need any contour. Your face is already naturally contoured. Yeah. That's She's beautiful. You're beautiful. Um, but yeah, like not a huge, like this week was about the Sheena who, she's Oh my insane. God, Sheena, come on girl. She's again, she's that girl. She's a girl that gets like, she's, she's, she's a little touched. She's got some shit she's got to work out and fuck, I bet. And she gets under, like 
she, uh, she's the Danielle Stump. <laughs> I okay. know, I know. I'm just, she's, she's, she, Sheena has problems. Like no one cares about you and your boyfriend. They don't. Katie's baby voice gives me so much Ooh. pot. She's always like sort of talking up here. And I'm just like, but you, that's not your voice. I can tell that you're not talking with your full body. Like I want to be like, uh, yeah, like breathe into your body girl. And I know that sounds very sort of like, and I have been accused of having a baby voice. I'm sure, but Wait, the way that Katie is yeah. talks in sort of this little voice, I just feel like what's going on. What's Katie's husband's name again? Schwartz, Tom Schwartz. <laughs> He's part of Tom Tom. <laughs> Tom Schwartz of Tom Tom. Tom Tom Schwartz. <laughs> So he he had this thing where he was like he's talking about I was like yeah blah 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 but now that Katie's so cool or like Katie's yeah. so cool now it's like you fucking married her and now because she's like, like guys, what is this narrative he hates his wife <laughs> he hates his wife and I am not I don't blame him he hates his wife and he's a loser too but he hates his wife uh, she doesn't hate him he hates her Guys, that's Vanderpump for this week. Unless, do you have any other thoughts on Vanderpump, Diana, that you wanted to get out? I really appreciated Lisa bringing the bread in. I thought that was very comical. There's no way she ever fucking picks up bread or touches bread in her life. No, no, no. Um, Am I leaving it off on bread? That that might be it. Dropped off. uh, There was a there was a there was a clueless reference when they were playing tennis that they really they really neglected to. What was what was that? Remind me. She was saying like no more balls at my face or something, and it was like, well, there goes your social life. But they they just really let that hang, and I and I felt I felt um, unsatisfied. No, I I get that. They didn't credit that. They didn't credit that movie. They actually my question on reality shows. Mm -hmm. You know, pop culture comes up a lot, like on The Bachelor, let's say, right? But like you can't really air that because that's intellectual property. I think if it's like a news program, (laughs) which I'm not saying reality TV is the news, but I think if you're like talking about it in a discussion, I think you can, again, I don't do property law, but I do think, I'm sorry. (laughs) I know. I know. Unclear. I've made that very unclear to people when I've said like, give me your property law questions. But, um, (laughs) But I believe that there is some sort of like you can talk about it. I think you can't sing a song or something like okay, that. Okay, you can't quote it probably. Maybe. I don't because know. like I feel like I'm like again, not to stray from our mm-hmm. beloved shows, but like in The Bachelor, I feel like they have good dates, but that they have to edit a lot of that pop culture reference shit out because they're not allowed to like sell that product. I, I don't think know. you're assuming that they're cooler and smarter than really these people yeah, are. That is it. Oh my God, they're such fucking idiots. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, that's cool, cool, my cool, cool, assumption. Cool. I don't know for sure. I used to watch Bowser. I'm not in on it now. No, no, but no. It's garbage. It's worse garbage. It's stay where you're at. Um, but Vanderpump, again, is really giving me life. Oh. When I've had a tough week, settling into some Vanderpump feels like a glass of wine in my body. Yeah, it's real. It's like, it numbs it all. Cause yeah, they're oh, drinking. The whole, the whole like um, James and Logan. <gasps> oh my God, I can't believe oh I my- didn't talk about that, Danielle. <laughs> What is wrong with you? James and Logan. Yes, they are definitely fucking. Definitely For sure. sure. Raquel For is. Sure. Raquel. Yeah. Thank you. Le- Thank you. Tiana, I cannot believe. God bless Guys, you. Guys, I'm just doing the Lord's work. No, they are fucking. For sure. <laughs> For sure. And I don't mind that if James, like, I don't know that they're fucking, but I do believe what, um, what's her name said that, you yeah. know. That James, like, it's not like James is necessarily fucking him, but if the guy's like sucking James's dick, I don't think he's pulling it away. Yeah, I that's yeah, exactly, my on exactly. It. I don't. Yeah, what's her I name? Bet, said, who said that? Someone said that. All of them said that. Yeah, They're like, I we don't so. care if you're gay, but yeah. don't cheat on your girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Or like, if Which you're gonna get right. sucked, fine. Like, that's God fine. Bless. God bless. But own it. Own your dick getting sucked. Yeah. Okay, real quick, I'm just gonna touch on Atlanta. I know you don't watch Atlanta. April, you watched Atlanta this week. Yeah. A few things real quick. We know last week, so we mixed over, they all went to Houston for the, um, you know, the hurricane charity stuff, yeah. which was laughable. <laughs> um, again, it all started with good intentions, but it came back to them, which it always does. But I, so, and that bears its ugly head in this episode, but my most important question of the evening was, what was Portia wearing to cook a casual dinner? <laughs> That outfit was insane. I've never seen anything like that. And she's just having one person over to her house. Like, right. And I get it. These girls dress to impress. But sometimes I am in shock by the things they put on their body for like just one person coming over. So that was um, insane. And then Kim Zolciak is my favorite person. She's the most quotable person. And as Portia is cooking for her, she says, 
regarding the soup that Portia's just made or just some sort of, you know, like right. red pepper coulis type of soup. But there's soup. also a chef there cooking. Yeah, of course. It, she said, damn, this shit is good. <laughs> this is good shit. Like, she is such a trash mouth and I love her. Like, she's just... From the backwoods, but I adore uh, her. She, about butternut squash soup? Yeah, she was like, this shit is good. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> which is my first. And then we were introduced to the new housewife, Eva, Eva? Eva, Eva. Who I remember from America's remember Next from Top, Top Model, Model who well. was gorgeous and controversial. Stunning. I remember her. Even then. Yeah. like, And so I think she is going to be a welcome addition to this cast. Yeah. I do. I She's think already she, stirring oh, quite yeah. a pot. Woo. She looks good. She sounds good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's giving me so many good feelings. Like, she fits in right as rain. Like, again, I like to feast my eyes on some beauty. She is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She dresses, like, in a way that I can't keep my eyes off her. Her skin is so beautiful. Her green eyes, like Deanna's over here. Yeah, like, she's, yeah. She's good to look at. Yeah. So I'm excited. I think she's a good addition to this cast, like, right off the bat. Yeah. She's coming in hot. Coming in strong. Again, she like kind of Her gave husband's us- running for mayor? Wow. Yeah. I don't know if this show is good for his Yeah, career. I don't know if that's like great, but seeing looking forward I mean, to how that for ties the president, in. but Right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, yeah. they've already talked about campaigning. Is Nini on the season? Yeah. Yes. She's back. I fucking love her. I know. She's sort of the in for Ava. Ava. Ava? Oh, good. Okay. Ava? Okay. Yeah. So I watched her Celebrity Apprentice. I think they had to bring Eva on, Ava on, so for someone to talk to Nini. Oh, Isn't my God. Is it crazy to oh bring someone in mid-season? Because I, this, sometimes I guess that happens. Maybe it, that happens a, a little bit. I feel like they did that with... Um, what's her name from last year on Beverly Hills? The one who went away. Oh, uh, Edie. Oh, what was her name? The uh, Sassoon. Eden. Sassoon. Eden. And, like they sort of brought her in, but, yeah. but yeah, like no one's talking to Nini really right now. Like everyone, she's on the outs with everybody. So I feel like Eva's there to kind of just like, <laughs> someone talk to, someone talk to Nini. Find someone to talk to Nini. Uh, so that was, and then another great quote of the night was Kenya saying, uh, being a wife, you always have to have your energy up and looking good. Oh, my God. Her talking to her friend in this weight room. So they're buying uh, her new husband uh, weights. And yeah. she's like, maybe he'll stay longer if I have this weight set at my house because he lives in New York and she lives in Atlanta. Oh, my God. And she wants him to move to Atlanta so that he will have babies with her. And it's so they're sad. They're already married. They're married. They're married. But, but then she stay goes in different in, cities. You'll last longer. But then she goes into this speech about like what it is to be a wife. She's like, it's taking up all of my time. You have to. Yeah, she said you have to. Your energy has to be up. I was like, Oops. you have to be sexy <laughs> all the time. The house has to be right. What? It was such like a 1950s way of looking at yeah. like marriage. And she says like, oh, he's traditional. But I'm like, but that's beyond anything. Yeah. Like my energy, yeah. your energy is not always up. Like no. you have to live your yeah. life. Yeah, man. And again, or maybe I'm a terrible wife. She's just that's how you it found it left out. and right. <laughs> what's happening. It's weird. It's real weird. Yeah. So that was crazy. Because that's what led her into the bathroom in the Houston episode. Yeah, like she's, she's like tearing up oh a storm. God. Goes and yelling at producers like these. I don't like any of those bitches at that table. I know. It was, she's the only one who breaks camera on this fucking show. Kim Zolciak used to a little bit, but like she, I feel like every other episode is like oh, I'm breaking down, talking to a producer. Like I kind of, but I love her. I yeah. love that about oh, her. Yeah. And then also, I cried during this episode. I've cried more on this show than I have like other things in my real life. Um, <laughs> but. When Candy was accepting Aww. that essence, when she was talking about Essence magazine and what it meant to be on the cover for her and like how she looked up to it, like I started bawling. I mean, this woman has been working yeah. her so ass of off. Her. I really am proud of her. Yeah. And speaking so of, hard. I cried too in the last episode when her daughter got off the phone with their real yes. dad and, or with her dad. Block. Mm-hmm. You mean block? Yeah. Yeah. And that was tough. That was Way rough. to end an episode. But like good crying in this episode, yeah, right? This because was, I'm. She's come so, you know, like she's worked her whole life and had a big career, like yeah. spanning so much longer than so many people's career. To go this long is so impressive. To have written Scrubs. I know. Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> wow. And she, she's, she rules. Yeah, I love her. And the last thing I'll mention, if anybody has anything else to say was, oh, two things. 
Todd's weird speech where he roasted people. I was going to say, I was going to be like, why did you roast Portia? Just so now? strange. And Portia's an asshole, but just like, don't mention her. Right. Like, at Candy's day, we don't need to <laughs> roast. It was so strange. He's the weirdest, but whatever. Fine. Got, you know, if that's what she likes, good. And then also, Eva coming out with that information about Cynthia's boyfriend. Yeah, Will. Well, I mean, we all knew he was full of shit from yeah. day one. Just the way he sort of presented himself and the things he would say. Coming because, off too sweet in a way. It was like, what are you He hiding? was too rehearsed. There yeah. was something. He felt like he was selling something himself, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. And it was gross. So I'm glad she's out of that relationship. I'm glad Eva did that. Happy he's gone. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, though. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Cynthia's rules. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Cynthia has... A she bad picker, a as we call yeah, it. A bad is. picker. <laughs> but which is fun for us. I'm happy to, to be privy to I mean, to the it. thing is, is like, she's, she can't be that mad at him. I mean, she sat at dinner with him and said, I don't want to date anybody for I a disagree, year. I disagree, April. I disagree. Why? Because first of all, he said he didn't have a girlfriend. Right, that's true. So he's a liar. She okay. was upfront. Mm. And also, it's not that he's dating he has a girlfriend. That's true. That is different. That so is different. April, label. You're right. You're wrong. I am wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> you must atone. Ah. Guys, what a, an amazing episode. I know Casey wasn't here and I'm, you know, She's again, sad. as Matt would Poor say, R.I.P. Casey. Casey. <laughs> Casey. R.I.P. And I'm glad that even though you were reported by some Spanish newspaper to be deceased, <laughs> that you are not. <laughs> we miss you this week. We hope you're feeling better, but... My guests, Matt Besser, listen to his podcast, Improv for Humans. Nicole Shabtai, who, I mean, bees just had a baby. And bees on the bee, guys. Gave us bees on the bee. And Deanna. Guys. Wow. Deanna Russo, you... Turning down seasons and series in Toronto to stay home with my kid. <laughs> what can we... Where can people find you on Twitter and Instagram? Can you give Yeah, them- at Deanna Russo... Twitter, the Deanna Russo on Instagram. And I got a movie that's coming out on Amazon like tomorrow when this lands called The Ice Cream Truck. If you like an old school slasher movie, but with like a stay at home mom kind of twist. Cute. I do like that. I will be watching that. Everybody watch The Ice Cream Truck. And where can we find your skin? Yes. Is it for sale? Again, I'm going to leave a a little creepy. (laughs) She's stunning I'm, and I know gonna get guys, out of here before you maul me she doesn't even need Claire de Peau cause she's no. fucking we all need Claire de Peau we have very attractive guests on this podcast <laughs> so much better I than my raggedy ass for these women baby god bless them <laughs> thank you guys thank you thank April thank you Danielle thank you April thank, thank you Danielle. News thank you July thank you Earwolf Thank you, Supermoon. Yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, and before we say goodnight, I just wanted to give a shout out to Lori from your daughter, Sam. We know that you've had uh, some tough stuff happen lately. And so we just wanted to say we're thinking of you. Hope we can, you know, make you laugh and make you smile. Your daughter obviously loves you very much. Um, So sending you lots of love, Lori. Good night, everyone, or good day. One last thing, bitch slash listeners, Nicole Shabtai wanted me to let everybody know that the dessert at PK's 50th birthday party was delicious. So although she was stuck on a boat for six hours, the dessert made it all worth it. Hey y'all, I'm Kristen. And I'm Caroline. And we're the hosts of a brand new show called Unladylike, where we find out what happens when women break the rules. We'll be bringing you real world women's stories along with our own nerdy deep dives in this weekly investigation of womanhood. How privileged would you say your abortion was? Well, okay, I might say, I might say like an Ivanka Trump, Did he just say that? Did he just put us in the same sentence? If you ask me, like, what my thighs can do, do you think I'm going to be like, they can have sex with you? Find the first episode of Unladylike now in Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. To access ad-free and bonus episodes, visit unladylike.co slash podcast. Because we got some unladylike things to say. (laughs) 
This has been an Earwolf production. Executive produced by Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Colin Anderson. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.